little tour of the marina. There's pontoon three. If you go all the way up, there's pontoon seven. That's where they typically put guests. And there's a little black hut, and that's the kind of welcome hut for visitors. Not the port captain, just a welcome hut. And over there, those are the showers. And if I continue to rotate around, there's downtown. Yep, that's where many of the restaurants are. Welcome to Northern France, see? The Twin Keelers. If you're in the back row, you definitely can't get your boat out. <laughs> Today we're out to hike the Sentier des Douaniers, Customs Officer's Path, which is 1,800 kilometers. Is this your mooring ball, Gal? Another in our series of islands that are only reachable at low tide. Gail's going for a drier route. I wonder why there's all these rocks here, yet the rest of the beach was all sand. Okay. We have found the path. I have to stay a little bit back because you never know when you're going to stop. Yeah, I, I need taillights. <laughs> So we're looking out on the beach, La Plage en Francais. There's a guy using a metal detector. And if you look over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a pool. And so it's a pool in which is filled by the ocean. When the ocean leaves, then the walls keep the water in. The store here is a librairie, which is one of those false friend words. A false friend is a word which you think you know. Librairie sounds like library but it's not, it's a bookstore. So if you go in there and think you're just gonna walk out with a book, they might arrest you. The path continues. Look at these really beautiful homes you happen to have in their front yard. A beautiful bay. How cool is this, a little bridge. So when there's lots of runoff, the path stays open. And when the sea comes in, the baladeurs, the hikers, keep going on. We're back on the red and white course. We're still on it. We've reached almost the end of our hike, so we have to walk back. We discovered this absolutely gorgeous bay for small boats. We've left the sea, and now with the beautiful vistas of the French farmland. Boulevard de Littoral. Well, literal is another false ami or false friend. It means coastal. It has nothing to do with how we use literal in English. And we are using it to get home. And Gail is ahead of me. So I must continue. I can't chit-chatting with you guys. Vous achetez quoi? Uh, oh, mais. A quick chance to get an early start on Christmas shopping. Sailing in the Brittany coast is alive and well, and it's not an elitist sport. Young kids of all stripes participate in sailing. The high tides and all the challenges do not stop them. Both catamarans, monohulls, dinghies, all types of characters go on to then become the world's best round-the-world sailors. Go French sailing. Today we decided to take the same path, the customs route, south. We are hiking towards Benique, which is Breton for end or point. The town's nickname is City of Spray. Do the winter storms produce the spray? A trailside plaque stated that there were 20 houses in this area from the Middle Ages. Wow, Brittany has history. The Bretons and the French have a long history of war. In 1532, through some marriages based on real estate, not love, Brittany permanently became part of France. To some Bretons, the fight is not over. Here the path became a bit treacherous and we had to go slowly to keep our sure footing. No need to get to this beach early to reserve a spot for your towel. The brightly colored swim shacks are very attractive and remind me of something you'd find in the UK. Another port with a sill. So right now we're at low tide. But at high tide, here's how you come in, right through here. 
nice and full of water. And behind that door on the left is the marina. Let's give you a tour. Okay, voila. And that whole thing gets out of the way when the tide comes back. Marinas with sills can be a bit intimidating at first, but there are a couple of advantages. The favorite is that when the sills close, the slips are dead calm and very comfortable to sleep at night. The biggest disadvantage, of course, is getting out is based on the tides, not on your whims. Beautiful town of Finik. And there's the marina right there. And this is the main drag. Water pump's been a bit finicky. And what does that mean? It means after you use it, it sometimes continues to make a clicking noise. As I reset it, the pipe that comes into it, I worked on the gasket. It had had like a intermittent drippy leak and then it became a gusher. Plastic part, probably cost 29 cents, um, had a crack. Uh, actually a piece fell off of it. I found the piece and I epoxied it and the cure time's three hours. I gave it a little over four and a half to cure, put a little heater on it to accelerate the cure. This is the water coming in from the water tank. This is where the filter should be. This plastic bit is the housing for it. Uh, there's a little mesh guy that goes into this thing. And then it goes onto the water pump. This is the moment of truth. If we can't get this to work, we're a little screwed. We still have a tiny leak coming out of the filter. We can sort of use water until the new part comes. Who'd you order our new housing from? Uh, a marine store in Jersey. Were we'll they fun to talk was... to? Yes, they were. What, what made them so fun to talk to? I could speak English and I think they understood what I was saying. And what appointment do we have on Sunday? We're going to the Duane. What is the... Is that like Duane Reed? Yep. We're going to stamp our passports. Ah, and what's stamp in French? Temp. Tempone. You might wonder what's at stake if the water system gets shut down. Well, a boat is like its own municipality, so all the water is stored in the one water tank on the port side of the boat. And to get water out, there's one pump which sucks on a hose that takes the water out of said tank and sends it off to the toilet, the shower, which we don't use that often, and the kitchen sink, which we use a ton for washing dishes. And so all of those functions won't be available uh, if the water pump fails, and it had failed. It's wise for me to get a second backup pump for this boat. It's an integrated system, so when one part fails, this filter, it just knocked out the whole system because I couldn't pipe around it. And that's kind of a fatal flaw of this whale compact system. And Take five on fixing the water pump. Boy, this is the part that is at issue. This is the, a second piece that now has detached itself, which I will re-epoxy on. Little handles that hold it in place have broken off. And so this is what's called a two-part epoxy. So you squirt it, and then you mix it, and uh, you have about three minutes to work with it. Uh, it's just like working with glue. Um, and then after three minutes, it hardens so you can't work with it anymore. And then you need to give it, according to the manual, three hours. Um, I try to give it a lot more time than that, and I put some heat on it, because that makes the epoxy go faster. I will leave you now for my work as an epoxy specialist. There's the space heater, and there's the filter cover. And I asked Gail, you know, don't we have rescue tape? Some sort of uh, thing I bought on Amazon that's supposed to save you from all problems. And now, here's what it looks like. Boom chakalaka. One of the more ugly hobo jobs I've done. Doubled epoxy, then wrapped in this rescue tape. But our water pump now is currently leaking at a very slow rate, which is acceptable for the next week until we get the spare part. And this is the aforementioned product, Rescue Tape, which claims that it can handle 500 Fahrenheit, 8,000 volts, and 950 PSI. So I believe the 8,000 volts as rubber's not a very good conductor, so that's kind of a nonsensical thing, but 950 PSI, no way. And 500 Fahrenheit, I, I gotta assume it melts. And this is my own diesel alley. So that's a empty bottle for oil changes. A bunch of spare parts for the engine, such as impellers, 
gaskets, oil blankets. When you fuel up, it's almost impossible not to have a drop or two. Funnels, when you're funneling in fuel or coolant. And my jiggler. Jiggler is the greatest way to, to uh, siphon, to siphon in uh, fuel. Watching the fireworks. Gail's turn on the deck lights, and it just lights up this deck so nicely at night. And that's only 33% of the power. Okay, just to contrast, the first was just one deck light. It's located just below the radar. And this is the spreader light. So now there's three lights from above, and a holy Toledo, it's like noon. The whole deck is just so well lit. So you can imagine having to come out here at night to do a spinnaker change or something like that and just feeling like it's noon, not having any problem. Or you've got a big ship headed your way and you don't think uh, she sees you? Well, she'll see you now. We now have turned on the boom light. Which the boom's quite low right now. I have little courtesy lights. These are kind of little guys down here and they are fantastic for well late night dinner or you just need to see something but you don't want to lose your total night vision we have a regatta going on can you tell us a bit about it uh it's a trimaran regatta it's these big trimarans that you see on the dock here yep how many feet are they i don't know how many feet are they 50, <laughs> 50 feet they yes call oceans 50, so <laughs> yeah. I guess so. and there's about six of them and we just spent a bit of time trying to compare. They're a one design class, but box rule. So that means they're very similar, but they still have choices. This guy over here has six furlers on his foredeck. So these boats do around the buoys rarely, I think. Uh, they cross oceans more commonly and they don't do it with a lot of comfort. This boat has two coffee grinders bunch of big winches and enough protection that you could stay out of the rain I guess but you sleep somewhere behind that hatch not comfy and this has been a whole race village so a lot of a lot of uh, kind of pre-race excitement going on here now tomorrow le meteo the weather forecast dans le matin during the afternoon l'après-midi pardon Dans l'après-midi, il fait beaucoup de vent, peut-être 30 nœuds de vent. C'est pas le problème pour Gail, car qu'est-ce qu'on fait demain? What are we doing tomorrow? Why is don't you care? We're going to the movies. Big long line here. That is to buy tickets for the move fleet. Yes, they like them here. Companion way hatch has a bit of friction and when the boat's rocking creates some noise. So to solve this, I've bought some slippery little inserts that will eliminate the noise. After a tough day in which we hit at a movie theater to avoid the boat that was definitely rocking, uh, the rainbow comes out. How great is that? Gail's happy. That's great. <laughs>
The winds dropped later in the afternoon, and the trimarans were out racing. The racers stayed on the dock earlier in the day because it was too much wind to dock and undock, not too much wind to race the sailboats. To dock these boats, they use a very weak engine in the center of the boat with the help of two or three dinghies. The baguette run. Yes, a very French tradition. Unfortunately, we are leaving France tomorrow, so this is my last baguette run. And the baguette I chose was the Tradition. <laughs>